All right, so it's the end of the year, and I figured, you know, I haven't been doing Raw reviews for the entire year, but fuck, I've been watching wrestling for the entire year, close enough that I feel like I can make a top 10 favorites video for the year of 2013 for WWE, and I'm not attaching favorite what behind this, because this is going to encompass a bunch of different things, could be matches, could be storylines, uh, you know, stuff that was released by the WWE. Could be a bunch of stuff on this list. So this is just top 10 favorites in general for the WWE 2013. So here we go. Number 10 is going to be uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust tag teaming together. After well over a year of Cody, of Cody Rhodes doing absolutely fucking nothing but jobs... They finally decided to do what they should have done a long time ago, which is put him in a storyline with his family. They got Goldust invo involved. They got his father involved, Dusty Rhodes. And it, it's so great to see Goldust back because I really, I have always liked Goldust in the ring. And, you know, it put Cody Rhodes in a great position to get some major face time against Triple H and Stephanie. And having uh, Dusty Rhodes in there is also cool. And it's just fun to see the two of them tag teaming. That's just pretty cool. Number nine was The Shield winning the U.S. Uh, title and the tag team titles. And I guess just overall, the handling of The Shield in general throughout the year has been very good. I mean, yeah, after they won the titles, The Shield did kind of get put on the back burner for a while, but they've been heating things up again for the past couple of months lately. And it, if you just take a look around at some of the other shit that the WWE has fucked up, so bad this year, they really didn't do too bad a job with the Shield. The Shield actually turned out all right. So for that, I am thankful. And it looks like now they're heading towards a breakup, which I am actually totally fine with. I'd like to see these guys split up and do some singles competition. See them advance a little bit, uh, get a little bit higher uh, in their careers. I mean, I think over a year is pretty good as a, as a three-man group. Now let's see what they can do individually. I'm ready to see that. Number eight, the Mark Henry retirement swerve. This was a great promo that had a ton of people fooled. I mean, the one thing that gave it away for me was that they left Cena in the ring during the promo. I personally think it would have been better if Cena would have left the ring. Mark Henry did his whole speech, and then Cena came out again when he was done talking to shake his hand. Then Henry just could have, boom, hit him with the world's strongest slam. But uh, the way they did it was still all right. Had a lot of people fooled, and it was just great. Mark Henry acted the part well with his emotion, and he really made a lot of people believe that he was going to retire. And then he hit that world's strongest slam on Cena. That's what I do. It was great stuff. And it was just fun to see Cena get his fucking ass handed to him. Even though their match uh, at that pay-per-view turned out to be fucking shit. Number seven was RVD coming back to the WWE. Uh, I was worried at first that they were going to treat RB, RVD like garbage and just feed him to the Cena machine, but they kind of did treat him like crap uh, when he was going up against Del Rio, having him tap out and a bunch of other weak shit. But overall, they did all right by him. He got back into shape to come back to the WWE, and his style now, uh, his slower-paced uh, moves fit the WWE's style of wrestling matches better than they did in TNA. So... I think uh, he definitely added some much-needed talent to the roster to put on some big matches on Raw and at pay-per-views. Very happy to see the man back. I've always been an RVD fan. And yeah, he's gone now, but he'll be back. He's only gone temporarily. I'm sure he's going to be coming back at the Royal Rumble. Number six was uh, the CM Punk versus Undertaker match at WrestleMania. This was another great Undertaker match. It wasn't... One of the best. I heard a lot of people say this is one of the best Undertaker matches ever. Not in my opinion. And people are still saying that. This match was good. You could even say great, but it wasn't one of the best. I don't think so. But again, you know, that's my opinion. It was a good match. The storyline building up to it was great. Use, unfortunately, using Paul Bear's death, but uh, it, they did work it into a great storyline. But sad to see Paul Bear go. He was a great character. And the match was great because it, it worked uh, people's expectations of it kind of turned it against them. Like, you expected to see The Undertaker do the walk across the ropes and hit the, the arm, but it wasn't. CM Punk did it to The Undertaker. You know, they kind of twisted some things around 
during the match, and uh, it made it a very interesting and entertaining match. And number five is Daniel Bryan versus Antonio Cesaro. This is from the July 22nd episode of Raw. Had Daniel Bryan running the gauntlet, and this was like the second match in a series of three or four. Uh, and yeah, I'm ranking this match h higher than the Undertaker match, and I'm sure some people are going to give me some flack for that. But you know what? That's just how I feel, and I think this match was better. And, uh, you know, it's just my opinion. And going into this, I wasn't expecting a lot from this match, because it was the second in a series of matches. I thought it was just going to be a quick throwaway match. It wasn't. It was long. It was back and forth. And the crowd was just like, man, they just got so pumped. And I got so pumped because Cesaro and Brian, I really like Cesaro too. And I really like Brian. And the two of them have such great chemistry in, in the match on that night. And I think overall, they haven't wrestled too many times. But on, on that night, they were really firing on all cylinders. They put on a fantastic match that had it was just great from beginning to end. I really enjoy it. If you guys are a fan of Brian and, or Cesaro, and you haven't seen that match, I recommend you go check it out from July 22nd. Number four would be the Daniel Bryan and John Cena sort of face off the promo on the last Raw before SummerSlam. The You Are a Parody of a Professional Wrestler promo. This was awesome because Cena, not only did he get his fucking ass handed to him on the mic by Daniel Bryan, but he got his ass handed to him by the crowd. People did not want anything to do with John Cena on that night. They were firmly behind Daniel Bryan. I'm going to always remember two things from this promo. Daniel Bryan calling Cena a parody of a pro wrestler and uh, Daniel Bryan talking about how in Japan they would, sl you know, wrestlers would slap each other back and forth, you know, when they're preparing for a fight. It was a show of respect. And Daniel Bryan refused to slap John Cena. Even when Cena got pissed and slapped uh, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan still wouldn't slap him. He just laughed at him. Was amazing. Number three, CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. This should have been the match of the year, in my opinion. It fucking wasn't even nominated, thanks apparently to some Triple H bullshit, which is just that. Fucking bullshit. But um, you know, the build-up to this match was excellent, but Punk and Brock, they worked this match in such a great way. It was so Punk being the smaller guy, having to fight for his life against Brock Lesnar, and Brock just beating the shit out of Punk at parts. Uh, but Punk, you know, was relentless, as he said he was going to be, and he just kept on coming back and coming back. And you have Paul Heyman just being the heel manager and his facial expressions during the match and the things he was doing during the match, they, they were heelish. It was great bad guy stuff, and it was just fucking hilarious. Everybody did so well. All three guys did so well in the match, and the match was really exciting from beginning to end. One of the best, uh, if not the best match of the year, in my opinion. All right, number two. It was, uh, was going to be Dolph Ziggler winning the World Heavyweight Championship, the Raw after... WrestleMania. And yeah, okay, everything, and I mean everything that happened after that night was garbage. It was shit. It just, it sucked whole asses, gigantic fat asses. It was, it was, it was just garbage. It fucking sucked. But for that night, when Dolph Ziggler came out, the fucking place blew up. You could see in his face, he knew after months of teasing, he was finally going to do it. He cashed in, but he didn't win right away. And I think that helped build up the moment so that when he finally did pin Del Rio, man, the fucking place exploded. I was on my feet after that. And yeah, after that night, everything else sucked. But for that one night... That moment was amazing. One of it was fucking great. Definitely the best night for Dolph Ziggler, but uh, and it still gives me goosebumps watching it to this day. Was a great moment. All right, and my number one favorite thing of the year for the WWE was gonna be the the CM Punk Paul Heyman feud that took place over the months, you know, the summer months. The the promos between these two, the segments between these two, gave us some of the best TV to come out of the WWE for the year of, uh, you know, WWE did a lot of things wrong this year. A lot of it was shit, but you knew 
that every week, if it was CM Punk doing something with Paul Heyman, that that was going to be the part to tune in for. You say, yeah, this Raw sucked ass, but you know what? That CM Punk, Paul Heyman part was pretty fucking good. Their promos back and forth, they, they just cutting into each other with the stuff they were saying. CM Punk wanting his vengeance and, and Paul Heyman just being so slimy and so dastardly. It was great stuff. Great TV. And, yeah, it kind of fizzled out a little bit towards the end there uh, as it got into the fall months. But over the summer, this shit was really good stuff. All right, so there you have it. That's the top ten list of favorites for the WWE 2013. Uh, I should hopefully, within the next couple of days, get my uh, top ten things that I hated list out. And um, I'll just stay tuned for that. JB Squared 61279. I will see you guys next time.